What's happening guys? This is Victor with Lorma CPA. It's great to see you again. In today's video, we want to talk about what are some of the tax laws that are affecting millennials now and that are going to be affecting millennials to the years 2021 to the years 2025. But before we dive into it too deeply, let's just go ahead and take care of the homework real quick, right? Help this channel. Go ahead and click like and click subscribe so we can keep talking about business, so we can keep talking about your personal finances, and we can keep talking about taxes as well. My goal as a CPA, guys, is to share with you my perspective as a CPA and also my experiences as a CPA with my clients and my friends. I would like you to use this information for you to educate you and also to get to know each other, right? And as well as, you know, in, in case you need to have some guidance or you need information for you to have expand your business, start your business, or get to know more things about how you can manage your tax situation, you can use this information as well. So if you remember, guys, back in the year 2017, President Trump actually reduced the tax rate, right? More specifically, the corporate tax rate to 21%. And this created a lot of energy, a lot of movement in the markets, right? Why? Because corporations were able to reduce their tax base and then utilize these tax savings to actually increase dividends or uh, increase their stock buybacks therefore increasing the per share price of their stock. It also affected small businesses because it brought tax savings to small businesses, right? Therefore, the small business bank account actually did go up as well as it did the pockets of the small business owner. But it also brought changes to people that do not own businesses. And some of these changes we're going to be talking in this video. So let's dive into it. Three, two, one. So the tax cut from 2017 actually, guys, was the highest and the biggest tax overhaul in three decades, right? And those changes are going to go to the year 2025. While the tax law changes actually affect every single American, it actually affects millennials in a big, significant way. Why is that? Because millennials are going to be their purchasing power and income is going to be increasing here for a number of years. They're going to be buying homes. They're going to be buying cars. Their income are going to increase as their careers are going to progress. Therefore, the tax situation for millennials is also going to change. And some of the tax provisions that actually affect millennials are related to the standard deduction as well as to the limit of the mortgage interest that they can deduct on their homes on their taxes. So we're going to be talking about five different tax laws that are going to be affecting millennials. Number one, the standard deduction. So the standard deduction for single taxpayers has been increased to 12000 550. The standard deduction for married filing joint has been increased to 25,100. And the standard deduction for head of household has increased to 18,800. You might be saying, well, Victor, what is the standard deduction going to do for me? Well, think about it. You have your level of income, right? And then you have your standard deduction. So your standard deduction, guys, is going to reduce your tax base, your taxable income is going to be reduced by the standard deduction. Therefore, your taxes are going to be lowered. This is actually an incentive. It's actually a tax break that the government through the IRS is extending to you in order for you to have a better tax outcome. Number two, guys. So the personal exemption actually did go away and it went away at least to the year 2025. And be honest with you, a lot of people are not too happy about it. Why is that? Well, because think about it. Years prior, you were able to take your standard deduction or itemized deduction, right? And you were also able to take your personal exemption and take an exemption for your dependents, right? So you were having your standard deduction, your personal exemption, and then exemptions for each dependent that you have, right? And actually this exemption was up to $4,050 per person. So if you were married filing joint, that was two exemptions. And then if you had a dependent, that would be another exemption. So you had, let's say $12,000 worth of exemptions. So your tax base would have been reduced by your standard deduction and then your exemptions. So a lot of people, as I said, are not extremely happy about it, right? But then think about it. If we go back to point number one, the standard deduction actually went up, right? So the IRS, what they have done is they have simplified the tax code in these regards, right? They have increased the standard deduction and then just got rid of the exemptions, right? By doing this, they're simplifying the tax code, but at the same time, you probably will be end up paying a little bit more taxes just because the exemptions did go away. Number three, guys, the child tax credit actually was increased to $2,000. 
However, for the year 2021, due to the pandemic, just to provide additional boost to the American taxpayer, that credit has been increased to $3,000. And then if you have dependents from the ages of six to 17, that child tax credit has been increased to 3,600. So you have an extra $600 worth of tax credit. However, in the year 2022, that tax credit is going to revert back to $2,000, unless the Congress changes this before the next tax season. Number four, guys, the mortgage interest expense deduction, which is a big incentive, is a great incentive for home buyers to buy a house, right? Think about it. People feel that a great incentive for them to buy a house is, okay, I'll buy a house and then I'll get to deduct from my taxes, my mortgage interest, and I also will get to deduct the property taxes. So that's an incentive, right? Why? Because they're gonna reduce their tax base and then the appreciation in value of the home will bring money back to their pockets in the years to come. And then of course, remember that you don't pay taxes on the first $250,000 that you make if out of five years, you lived a number of years in this property, in this house, okay? But we can talk about that specific rule later in a next video. Okay, so going back to the mortgage interest. So the ceiling, the mortgage ceiling has been brought down from $1 million to $750,000, right? So you get to deduct your mortgage interest on your taxes and the mortgage limit is $750,000. Anything beyond that, you don't get to deduct. Now, but then if you really think about it, guys, in the real estate market in which we're currently living in, when the prices are going up, 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 and they're gonna keep going higher. So as the values are going higher, the mortgages are going higher, right? So basically it'll be faster and easier for you to reach that ceiling of $750,000. And then of course, depends on the market that you're in. Okay, so remember that we are in a seller's market, right? The prices of real estate keep going up. So as an incentive, the IRS is extending you uh, the mortgage interest expense for you to deduct your taxes. Now. Let's let's be very conscious about this, guys. So if you have a mortgage in your house, then you need to check out our video about standard deduction versus itemized deduction. There, just to recap, you wanna see the description below here so you can see that video. But in essence, if you have a mortgage in your house, then you probably qualify for you to itemize your deductions. So if you get to itemize your deductions and your deductions are greater than your standard deduction, then you're gonna be in a better position for you to reduce your taxes. Point number five, guys, the student loan interest expense. Yes, it stays, it remains, and the limit is 2,500. So it doesn't matter if you have a standard deduction or you're itemizing your deductions, you get to basically deduct from your taxes the interest expense that you pay in your student loan up to 2,500. That is very good because many students actually finish college, graduate from college, and they have to take student loans in order for them to pay for tuition, books, uh, room, and you know everything associated for, for college, for school, right? So as an incentive, the IRS is allowing you to deduct your student loans from your taxes. In closing, guys, Remember, there's always one way for you to reduce your taxes and increase your wealth. You always want to talk to your advisor. You always want to talk to your CPA, right? You always want to do your own research. And why do you want to do this? Because you want to be in the best position for your personal finances. And as always, thank you for liking and subscribing, and we'll see you in the next episode.